Good morning and welcome to The Proof is in the Pudding. The Proof is in the Pudding, Building the Evidence Base for Digital Food Systems Interventions. My name is Ariana. I'm here from the Tech Change team, and you'll also see my name in the chat waving hello to you. Throughout this event, I will be here as your technical support, and I'll also be facilitating questions and answers at the end of the session. So please let us know what you're thinking, and I'll tell our panelists to talk to it. There are also folks collecting questions from different sessions, so please don't be shy if you don't see anybody reaching out in the chat yet. Um, but without further ado, I'm really pleased today to welcome you to our experts for this webinar, Maria Camila Gomez, Jonathan Mockshell, and Brian King. Hi there, good morning everybody, or good afternoon or evening, wherever you may be. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, this, uh, this clearinghouse that we're launching and a bit of its, uh, its origins and um, what we hope to achieve with it. And uh, Jonathan and Maria Camila can, can um, uh, help us understand a bit more about evidence and about how it's constructed and how the, the clearinghouse itself um, uh, functions. So I'm going to uh, share my screen here and uh, show you what we have in store. Just a moment. All right. Good. So uh, close to about three years ago, I would say, um, I had the privilege of being part of an initiative that was a joint um, initiative of the Bureau for Food Security and the Global Development Lab at, at USAID. And um, as we were looking into just very specifically, how can data and digital tools uh, help us to you know, digitally enable agricultural development, we found that it was a very fragmented landscape um, and very, very difficult to navigate. And so sort of at the, the urging of our, our colleagues in the Bureau of Food Security and with some great collaboration across the lab, uh, we set out to try to understand what would a fully digitized value chain look like. Um, and so we used the value chain framework as a way to start going and looking into uh, just different leads, you know, literature review uh, uh, of various types, both gray and, and academic literature. Um, we even would, you know, see when there was a kind of particularly buzzy, um, you know, uh, item in the business press or something about uh, a really interesting digital intervention, we would sort of chase that up a little bit and see, was there any evidence behind it? Was it a, a credible um, uh, intervention? And, and what, what we ended up doing was arriving at um, a, uh, a sort of master spreadsheet, um, you know, distilled from about uh, close to 300 different leads we had, where we, well, we, you know, when we saw an intervention that we thought had, um, you know, they'd measured, or there was a real specific measurable value add uh, to what the intervention was, uh, we noted that and we considered that evidence. Um, one of the things we found through that process is that we had to kind of relax a little bit um, the sort of standard for evidence um, because uh, it's an emerging technology area and we felt that, um, you know, our, our sort of group of experts that we had uh, access to were, were pretty good for evaluating if something looked to be pretty credible um, and, and something that we could sort of endorse um, as a team. And so uh, through this process of distillation and review and literature review and so forth, uh, we arrived at about 40, you know, we thought well-supported bits of evidence, and we looked at where those were intersecting um, along the agricultural value chain. And so, you know, fast forward a year and some, and um, now I'm uh, at uh, uh, a CGIR and, and I'm leading a program called the Platform for Big Data and Agriculture uh, that looks to sort of digitally enable uh, the ag development enterprise. And um, I reached out to the, to the colleagues at USAID and said, we'd really like to um, not only find a home, but try to help, you know, this, this effort um, expand or evolve a little bit. And so what we decided to do was that was to, to reframe it um, in terms of food systems. And so not just agricultural value chains. And um, here, let me uh, do my favorite uh, PowerPoint trick. Um, the, uh, we evolve a little bit beyond food, move it into talking about actual food systems rather than just value chains. And um, 
to, to really kind of figure out the processes by which evidence could be submitted and then to make sure that we had in place the mechanisms and the people and so forth to be able to do a little bit of that vetting and evaluation that, um, that the team was able to do um, at USAID. And so what we've arrived at now is the evidence clearinghouse for, for digital food systems. And, um, and we've worked through, we've put a lot of thought into what is evidence, what is an intervention, um, what is the kind of information we want to be able to capture um, about these. And um, I think I'll sort of stop there and let Maria Camila and, and John explain a bit more about um, how we're thinking about evidence, um, how the, 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 uh, the clearinghouse as a tool um, works, and we can talk a little bit about um, what, what we aim to do with this. So uh, over to you, John. Yeah, so based on the efforts that were somehow developed um, through the USH project, we noticed that the evidence that they had were mainly looking at the value chain, based on the value chain. And in order to broaden this up to cover the entire food system, which will be looking at it from pre-production to post-consumption, then we needed to examine the different forms of evidence when it comes to pre-production, for example, looking at input sales, for example, and then also production when it comes to looking at interventions related to precision arc or application of blockchain technology to examine food safety issues along the food supply chain or just waste management and also examining different expiring dates for products in supermarket. So the idea here was to use the entire food system framework, not just to limit ourselves to the value chain concept and then broaden this to examine all the different digital interventions that we have along the food system. And what we notice is that basically the entire food system and also digital interventions field is growing. And we needed to find a way to systematically track all the interventions along the food system. And apart from tracking also to be able to examine all the evidence which comes with the different interventions which are being implemented in different parts of the world. And also to help us engage with our agricultural food system and also food processes or agricultural processes. So, and the idea here, we knew that there was just very little and also we needed something that's more comprehensive and that we can verify and at the same time help self stakeholders identify some of the impacts along the food system. So the idea here was to have this critical evidence which we need and we've seen that already it's somehow missing. And that should be able to help us to identify some of the main interventions that will help us to send these interventions to scale and especially to be able to get this out for others to see and use them. So why do we need the evidence? Well, evidence is critical and is also important when it comes to designing food system interventions. And apart from that, also to be able to help us think about how to regulate the entire sector and also examine the main interventions, which is critical and for us to invest in, in terms of the food system and also be able to analyze and understand how to better scale this out in regions where such interventions are not there. So why do we need the evidence clearinghouse? Well, the main idea here is simple. We want to gather evidence. And by gathering this evidence, also be able to track the evidence along the food system and be able to build such a knowledge base, which will be very useful for all stakeholders. And especially to be able to scale this up in regions where you don't have such evidence. And specifically also to build this insight, which will be important for donors and other development partners. Mm -hmm. oh, that's you. So how does it work? <laughs> the clearinghouse basically works as a search engine. So what we need here is that when you type in a word, it will be able to tell you what type of intervention you have, uh, where the intervention is targeting in terms of the food system component itself. So whether it's looking at pre-production, production, or just the distribution channel, and also which activity along the food system you have such an intervention which country or region. So from the map here, you can see a number of interventions and which areas you find these interventions. And you'll be able to filter and target specific regions with specific interventions, and then you'll be able to have all the information straight away. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I hate to interrupt you, but I do have one question in the chat that it might be good to take now, which is whether we could actually change the display settings so that we could see this a little bit bigger. Um, so is, would it be possible for you all to hit the display settings at the top and just change that to the full screen mode so we can look at this map in detail? Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> Swap presenter view and slideshow, duplicate slideshow. I'm not really sure what's going on. Let's try that swap presenter view, see what that, that is, maybe. Oh, that may be it, because it's been, There we go. Yeah? OK. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. All right, good. All right, that's funny, because it's smaller for us, but that's fine. Okay. We know what we're doing. <laughs> All right. OK, hi, everyone. Um, so if you have any questions during the presentation, just feel free to type them down in the chat, or else at the end of the webinar, we'll get to you. So what I'm basically going to show you is how to submit a digital intervention to the to the digital food systems evidence clearinghouse, right? So um, here we go. So I prepared this tiny URL. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but we'll get there. So yeah. So you can, or you can just go easily through Google and put CGR platform for big data and agriculture and you will easily find the digital food systems evidence clearinghouse, which is as shown right here. So once you're here, just slightly um, scroll down and we have prepared some frequently asked questions just in case you want to, um, you have some doubts, you have some questions, you can just easily go there. And if you want to just go straight forward and submit your intervention, just through this button, it's as easy as clicking it. And once you're here, um, so you will find the form and the idea is for you to provide as much detail as possible so, you can, so we can facilitate um, the review process, right? So as you can see, it's basically, it's very easy. It's just checking some boxes and of course, providing some description of the name of your intervention. And of course, a description of your intervention. And most importantly is the part of the evidence, right? We want it to be very detailed as, as much as possible, right? So once you fill this, um, it's very easy, of course, um, provide your contact details and when you're ready to go, submit it, right? And we will review it as fast as possible. Once you're finished, if you want, you can also um, go to the list of interventions, which are the ones that have already been submitted, which you just scroll down a little bit more and you will find it here. So this is the map that John's been talking to you guys about. Um, it updates with every digital intervention that has been submitted and reviewed from our side. And of course, you will find the search box and the other digital interventions. So feel free, it's very easy, and we will review it as soon as possible. Oh, we need to come out of there. Okay. Can I close that? Yeah. Okay. So what, what we want to know, and also how will the evidence be reviewed? So the first thing we want to know if we take a specific digital intervention is to ask the question, who are the primary users of that intervention? Also, we want to have an idea about the estimated number of active users, if it's still in use, um, the location in terms of region where the intervention was implemented, uh, which component of the food system does that intervention target, and also which activity specifically is the intervention targeting. And the next step was then to be able to look at the evidence itself in terms of what exactly was achieved by means of implementing that specific data intervention. So we examine this from the social, technical, political, economic, and also environmental point of view. And first of all, to look at the evidences of what exactly we are looking out for. Then the question is, with the evidence that we have, what we want to understand from our standpoint and also based on general standards is that such an evidence should have, first of all, a steady design, which is clear and quite systematic. And also we want to see if we have that specific evidence, does it have any quantifiable number behind in terms of the number of people it's targeting, what was the impact of that evidence? Is it possible to also verify 
the impact of that evidence in terms of the number of people it's reaching and where, what exactly it was able to achieve. The next step will then be to be able to review the evidence itself. So in reviewing the evidence, we are going to use our community of practice um, from the big data platform. And we have the data-driven agronomy team, which are experts basically focusing on data-driven agronomy, crop modeling, geospatial data, livestock data for decisions, ontologies, and also socioeconomic data. So these are all experts, full of experts that we have within the CD and also other groups who are external to the CD. And these are experts who will be reviewing all the different interventions that will be submitted in order to make sure that it's credible, it has a steady design, and it can also be verified. How will the evidence be used? The evidence will generally give us some idea of what is being achieved in the digital agricultural space. So we'll be able to generate some reports, systematic analysis, meta-analysis, or also synthesize ideas of the major findings that we find. And this will be able to guide decision makers, inform them what is happening within the digital ag space, and also be able to connect such mature interventions to different organizations such as potential funders as well. So to give you a sense of a specific um, intervention, an example, we have one that has been submitted already to our platform called Pride. And the main idea here was to enhance the system, the climatic and also market resilience of its farm members, and also increase their financial resilience. So that was the main goal of Pride. And in terms of impact, they noticed that it led to a 15% reduction in pesticide use, 10% reduction in fertilizer usage, 48% uh, increase in yield, 45% um, increase in profitability of the farmers, and also increase, increase in compliance um, to best practices. So, and at the end, what we also notice is that it led to an increase in rural employment. So this is a specific example of um, one of the interventions that has been submitted. If we pull this together for the different interventions, then we'll be able to generate a meta-analysis that gives us um, a general idea or some insight to understand what is happening within the digital agricultural space. So is this the final one? Let's see. Okay. Great, thank you, Jonathan and, and Maria Camila. Um, so, I mean, going back to the genesis of this, and we were talking about a very fragmented uh, agricultural technology space a few years ago. Um, you know, as we look at the space now, we still find it's probably just as fragmented. And one of the reasons we think of that, of, uh, of that fragmentation um, among a few that I won't get into right now, but one of them really I think is having credible evaluators um, and credible measurements of, of the sort of value add uh, of digital uh, tools and technologies um, in food systems. I think, um, you know, over the last year, we've kind of had several members of, of, of the team kind of in circulation going to uh, ag tech innovation events and um, uh, different development fora and so forth. And um, we come, we hear this really common theme across a, a, an array of stakeholders, including policymakers, development practitioners, investors, venture, you know, multilateral banks, uh, venture capitalists, and so forth, of we need more credible measurements about what the value add of these, these technologies are. And so, I mean, all of those different stakeholders that, that I mentioned are ones that we would hope to be of use um, and of service to. Um, now to do that, uh, you know, people need to kind of show up to the, to the party. <laughs> and, and the danger of launching these things is that um, we won't get, um, you know, sufficient um, submissions. So, I mean, we're, how, how we plan to manage that in terms on the submission side is to put out some calls for evidence. And so we could say this is actually the first um, of the calls for evidence. And uh, we'll do this internally to CGIR and, um, and then we'll start targeting some development focused publications um, uh, as well. And so we'll see kind of how we can go. Now, uh, we, under this program, we run an, an innovation process called the Inspire Challenge. And uh, you know they are folks that uh, theoretically 
uh, since we're providing them grant funding, they should be inclined towards helping us load the evidence up into this. Um, and um, I also, it's worth noting that we spend a lot of time working through the processes. And so there are seven or eight examples in there right now, but we have those 40 still in reserve um, from, from the USAID exercise that we'll uh, take a kind of second look at and then and make sure that those are, those are put up in there. And so, I mean, I think it's, um, you know, it's a, we'll, we'll know over the next year or so if this is actually becoming a really, um, you know, fulfilling some of the vision we have for it, where it can be a really useful, uh, neutral, uh, um, based in an understanding of how impact research is done, um, based in subject matter expertise that we can tap through these um, open, you know, internal and external um, communities of practice that have about 4,500 4, members, where we feel pretty confident that just about anything that comes in through the submission form, um, we would have, be able to have some subject matter experts take a look at it and then, you know, make a decision if we feel confident um, um, uh, putting these up and publishing them. Um, I, it's also worth noting that our communications team uh, is, while well, they've been pretty integral in this design of this rework of this, of the, of the, what we call, used to call the evidence spreadsheet um, back at USAID. Um, and they're very interested in, you know, promotion and, and communication about the tool and particularly as we learning things through the tool um, to be able to, to promote those. And so, um, you know, we, we, we did a lot of, you see there's two buttons there. One is interventions and one is questions. Um, with the interventions thing, you know, we did a lot of thought about, okay, do we wanna just be capturing, you know, just interventions like, you know, and a startup is doing something really exciting and they've got a technology and they just wanna like put it there but they haven't really measured anything yet. And the answer is yes, we do wanna capture those things. Hopefully through this process that startup will also be setting up a study design and measuring some things and we can take a look at that and then we can um, we can promote it as 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 evidence. And so, um, you know, this is kind of our, our, our offer to the community. Um, you know, we, we, we think we can be a good technical resource. We think we can be uh, good um, evaluators of, of the quality of evidence. And, um, and we think we can be good promoters of, of what we find. So um, we'd ask everybody to, to join us on this, provide us feedback, provide us evidence, um, show up to the party, um, and uh, we'll know in the next year or so if we've really uh, uh, produced a good, a good information product and, and service for the sector. Thank you. Thank you all so much. That was an amazing presentation. I do have a couple questions for you just starting off actually where you ended. You touched briefly on this concept of impact. And I'm just wondering if we could dive deeper a little bit into that. So what is actually an evidence of impact for your team and how will that be evaluated and by whom? There's a lot of questions in that, but hopefully that's Yeah, absolutely. Up. I mean, Jonathan as the agri-food ag, 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 uh, economist um, has got way more versed than I am in the methods and approaches. But m my view on this is that, um, you know, the gold standards of evidence, like an impact study, uh, a, a randomized control trial, those kinds of things are very interesting. And to some, and in some sense, uh, teams that have been able to do those sort of don't need us, you know? Um, and so while we would love to have those and publicize them and so forth, kind of coming in as, as submissions, um, there's this other level, which is just, are people measuring something? Um, and is it a credible sort of, is it a credible argument, a credible bit of evidence that there's a kind of measurable difference or value add? Now, the longer term impact in the RCT kind of sets of questions are something that we would, you know, solve part of the data mobilization problem of being able, um, being able to address. And so I think we would want to link to uh, impact research um, from this, but this is kind of the precursor to impact research. Is that more or less? That's awesome. On point, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <That's on point. laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm? And another question that I have coming in is just about the organizations who are actually submitting the interventions. So, could you talk a little bit more about how those organizations actually benefit from this process? Well, we'd like to think that um, our kind of value proposition or what we have on offer is 
the ability to one promote certainly connect with um, connect those who are submitting into these communities of practice because it's not a kind of one way street as it were um, and um, and then you know I think uh, if we are building a good information resource the points of intersection and connections start to become very clear and so I would love to have it be much more integrated with the big data platform program overall over time so as I mentioned we run an innovation process where um, uh, CGIR and non-CGIR uh, teams form and they go after startup grants of up to hundred thousand dollars so I would like those who are submitting to become part of this overall kind of community of practice of digitizing agriculture um, and then I think we do a pretty good job of promoting and, and so forth as well. I would hope that we can build some some kind of cachet as um, you know uh, our, our you know group of subject matter and food security research experts. Um, if it you know signifies a bit of an, uh, a you know a bit of validation that that's that's a valuable thing um, for for submitters. And so we'll see how true that is. But that's that's where we're going with this. It sounds true to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanna encourage our viewers who are live right now to submit questions via the chat platform and to reach out to me if you have any questions about getting that done or have any sort of technical issues. Um, in the meantime, while we are waiting for more questions to come in, I did actually have one question that hopefully I thought your team would be able to answer and maybe Jonathan, I know you spoke to this a little bit more um, in your, your section of the presentation. But would you be able to speak more to the plans on how you all would actually critically assess the tool? So basically, once we have a submission coming in, we receive a prompt that tells us that, okay, there is a submission. And then our team will then go in to check what has been submitted. First of all, just have a quick check to see if that submission coming in has a steady design to check if there are some measurements and which part of the food system is targeting. Then if we can do it in-house, we go ahead to evaluate. But if we can, then we rely then on our committee of practice. So it can be the socioeconomic team if it's something related to that. And we call on experts from that pool to review. After review, then we would approve before it comes onto the website. So that's the process. Great, thank you so much. And I see one person asking if we could possibly just return to that website. I did send the link also to all around, but maybe if we could just look at it one more time, uh, the, the form there that was with the map, that might be helpful. What's side seven? 11. Oh, 11. Here we go. Oh, right click and then open. Open our filling. Uh, uh, right here. Oh, there it is. Yes. And so for all who are watching that URL, it's tinyurl.com <clears throat> backslash evidence clearinghouse. Okay, so we can share. And share. Okay, can you see that okay? I can, yes. Okay. So there wasn't a specific point to go through. So I don't know if you want to just scroll back down and then maybe if anybody has any questions as we're looking at it specifically or the person who submitted that question. Yeah, of um, course. So yeah, so as I was saying before, it's um, easy as clicking this button to submit your intervention. And just you will find here the form, which um, we, it's, it's an obligation almost to fill out every entry form and of course provide as much detail as possible. And it's just providing detail on your description and mostly the evidence, right? Because the rest is just checking in some boxes and of course putting in your um, contact details because if we need to get back into you and just in case we have any questions or anything, we will do that. And it's as easy as submitting. So it's actually, very easy. It, I don't think it will take a lot of time, but mm, preferably to do to put as much detail as possible so it can facilitate the reviewing process. And I do see one follow up question now, perhaps related to this form, and it's just asking about 
um, broadly what type of information, and I see that a lot of that is in this form, is required to submit an intervention, but perhaps also along with that, what stage of the, the intervention they should be in or what stage of the process when they're going to submit this form? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great observation. And I've, I've, I've we've had some discussion internally about how do we kind of refresh or update, you know? So if a, a startup's doing some really interesting work with some digital technology somewhere in the food system, you know, a year later, they could be in a, a, a very different um, position in terms of their, in terms of, you know, the evidence they had, the kind of pathways to impact they think that they've started to generate and so forth. And so um, I think we've been so focused on getting things in the door that in terms of how do we update those by stage um, is, uh, is, is something we need to address. Um, with, uh, I think for now, I would say that um, there should be some indication of that in this short description of the intervention. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let me see if there are further questions and hopefully that answers that person's question as well. Okay, I do have another question coming in here and it says, Thanks for a thought-provoking presentation. There are many platforms that start and then fade away, either because they run out of funding or lack of use or any other reason. So what is your team doing differently that will ensure the platform use and financial sustainability? The tough yes, one. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, Big Data Platform as a program uh, has got in its current form two more years. Um, and we've committed to have, you know, some 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 um, some researchers and staff available to help us keep tending to this. Um, I'm very conscious of the kind of throwing a party and nobody shows up dimension of so many of these platforms, um, and um, and it's a real danger, honestly. Um, so I mean, I think that what we'll be doing. I and mean, so much depends as well on having good quality information there in the first place, you kind of build one side of the network. Um, and so, you know, our goal over the next two years is to be providing a valuable information service to the sector pretty much on our own steam, unless we have an, you know, just an embarrassment of riches in terms of lots and lots and lots of submissions, and at which point we have to go find some funding to really, to really tend to the volume. But, um, um, you know, basically, we have about a two-year runway um, to show that this is a valuable information service to the sector. At the end of those two years, uh, this program will most likely fold into a plan through 2030 for CGIR, and uh, we'll do our best to make sure that this bit of evidence clearinghouse, um, consolidation, learning, information exchange uh, continues to grow, and it grows into what the 2030 plan um, for CGIR is for as the, as the new portfolio um, emerges for CGIR. Um, all of that said, if the, uh, towards the end of two years, it's something that's kind of there sort of dying on the vine, then we should probably just, you know, uh, uh, move on and try another tack really to, to address what I think is a really significant information need. Um, you know, I, it's really interesting to me see, I mean, I talked about how we're doing all these consultations um, at uh, you know ag tech innovation events and development fora and so forth, and and it's really interesting to hear, um, you know, kind of far and wide across all of these different types of stakeholders, this kind of bemoaning the lack of of rigorous evidence and a and a good place to to go for it. And so uh, we aspire to fill that need, um, and we've got about two years to to demonstrate the value of it and. Um, and uh, at some level, I would think it's, I would want it to be part of what uh, Big Data Platform uh, becomes um, after two years from now. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, that's a short window, but I know that I am excited to see it come to fruition and I've seen other people comment to similar degrees in the chat so far, so that's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, another question that came up was about this idea of a, a re-review process. So whether after things have already been in the database, different interventions have already been in the database for a few years, whether there would be any sort of um, further review of those, um, mm -hmm. those interventions. 
it's pretty similar to the, uh, you know, the stage question that I was referring to before of uh, going back and being able to track those innovations as they unfold. Um, and uh, the, the short answer is we need to, to address that. <laughs> um, right now, it's talking about get, getting things in the door and building up enough information to be able to start making it a, a useful resource. Um, uh, but I mean, we've taken note, we'll look at that process. And if, if um, you know, as what I thought, what we thought was a pretty simple thing of taking this, uh, this master spreadsheet from the D2FTF team a few years ago and transferring it into something, whether it could be some processes that enable submission of own, people's own evidence and stuff. At each step in the way, we started finding some, there was something that we needed to think through. So I'd be hesit I hesitate to say exactly what that process will look like. Um, because we've learned that everything requires a, a, a lot of thinking through um, to hopefully get to something pretty frictionless. But, um, but yes, there should be. Um, and I think there's nothing really prohibiting somebody just submitting a form again, right? Yeah. I mean, so I'm startup A and it's two years since I was last in and I've got all these great updates. I could just put it in. Um, so maybe that is frictionless. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, but there's nothing stopping people from resubmitting. You could say. Yeah. Thank you. And if, if that answers your question or if you have more questions, feel free to contribute that in the chat. Um, one comment that came in that was related to that question was somebody was referring to the interventions collected in the initial USAID evidence spreadsheet. Um, and this person commented that they were curious whether the USAID whether USAID had planned for scale and sustainability and whether that's still an ongoing process of collecting that evidence. So I think that that's sort of related to what they were originally asking about, um, as well as they made a note that it might be useful in these types of indexes to uh, include some dates about the inception, the date of the data submission and the date that the evidence was gathered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, um, it's, it, the, the spreadsheet itself emerged, as I mentioned, during the during in the context of a, a finite initiative that um, has since drawn to a close. It ha there are folks in the Bureau of Food Security or Bureau, Bureau of Food Security and Resilience now um, that are pleased that that effort has seen some sort of continuation. Um, I don't know that I fully understand the scalability question as relates to just particular bits of evidence. Um, if it's as relates to this particular effort, um, you know, we're, we're, we're aspiring to be it, I guess. Um, and we can do it on our own, you know, steam for, for a couple of years and, and try to demonstrate the value of it um, to both USAID and also to the sector um, overall. Now, in terms of a larger question about managing innovations and developing a pipeline of innovations, um, you know, I know that they think a lot about that um, at the Bureau of Food Security and Resilience, and I think that that's extending, extending to digital as well. So we'll see um, sort of what comes out um, in terms of, uh, of how that's reflected in the strategy, you know, that's defined for the, the, next, uh, the next round of, of food security and resilience um, investments that come from USAID. Um, I, I do... You know, going, pointing back to our own innovation process, the Inspire Challenge, which has some nice complementarities to this, um, and also just more broadly CGIR, you know, we're looking very specifically as well as how do we get more intentional about building the pipeline, you know, sourcing the evidence, sourcing the innovations, fostering them and moving them forward. I think um, what the function of this clearinghouse will be in that bit is to kind of document the evidence along the way. Um, and, um, you know, again, we hope it will be useful to, um, you know, I could envision a future two years from now where, um, you know, there's, we see some kind of trends or meta-analyses pointing to particular types of use cases where particular technologies are showing some good maturity. Um, you know, just AI for, you know, put something here, you know, blockchain for put something there. Um, if we've got a couple of years of these kinds of interventions and, and they can be just interventions, doesn't need to be evidence at this stage. Um, if you don't have it, if you do, we'd like to know. Um, so we can start seeing some of those trends. Um, and I think that um, it could be a pretty powerful thing in terms of informing what those scale up 
um, and investment strategies are. Um, but the more explicit managing of innovations um, uh, effort is kind of, at least for our program, is happening under, under another module, under Inspire. And this is about documenting the progress. Great, thank you so much for speaking to that. And I know that we keep jumping back and forth between the long-term sustainability of the project and the immediate launch and submission, but we do have another question regarding submission. So I'm just gonna bring Great. us back over there real quick. Um, and the question regarding submission is just whether the team has any sort of sample submissions or whether there's anything available that would that could serve as an example for people that are. I think there was that one slide that had the, yeah, yeah. Is that, it was. does that work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, could we well, maybe share that screen again? Would that be possible? Yeah, we'll just look at it one more time. Yeah, there was a, Last oh, there's the one. sharing. There's Last one. One. Which uh, slide was it? <laughs> Yes. I think the, the last one. Yeah, last last one. This yeah, one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, um, so this is a tidied up slide. Is this all then? Yeah. This one. Yeah. So, um, so this is the so this is the succinct description. Yes. Yeah. So right. basically, this is one example of a really good um, evidence that we have from Pride. So from M. Krishi. So um, it's basically a good description, a short, small but accurate des um, description of what their intervention is, and of course the evidence of impact, which is the percentage of either. Um, the the amount the percentage of the evidence of impact whether in the sector where they are their intervention is focused right so this is a good example but also in when you're submitting your intervention you can find a button as I mentioned before where it says go back to list of interventions and there you can easily find examples of the seven eight interventions that have already been submitted and reviewed also. So you can easily find that in the web page just in case you want to find an example of it. But it's very easy. It's just checking some boxes and giving as much detail as possible and the evidence that you have for your in digital intervention. And of course, as Brian was saying, if it's just a, a startup and you're just starting the study design, um, give as much evidence as you have for that too. Anything is anything we, we, we gather and review anything that you have. Um, you don't have to have something very complicated or something very advanced. You can have something that's just starting. We'll review it. Mm -hmm. Great. So hopefully that helps. And I don't know if we'll be able to put this um, this slideshow in the uh, as a document to people who have watched this, but maybe we can include that too for folks who want to to review mm -hmm. that in more depth. This, um, since uh, we have you here, this I can put in a couple of plugs for other aspects of the program that intersect with this. Um, so the Inspire Challenge, uh, it's closed for this year, um, is a, an innovation process that we run where uh, CGIR researchers uh, must team up with an external partner of any type, like literally any type. It can be a government, a bureau of statistics, a startup, uh, another research institute, um, a global IT firm even it could be. Um, but when they team up, they have to create something new. Um, and, and, and that thing itself needs to be innovative enough to be a potential game changer. Um, and of course it needs to be digital or, or uh, data driven. And so, um, you know, we've done, we've run two rounds of this already where we've made a few scale up awards. We've made, um, uh, uh, 10 startup awards and a few scale-up awards by now. Uh, this uh, process will culminate in our um, annual convention again this year, uh, 16 to 18 in Hyderabad at the ICRASET uh, campus. And um, so this is where the, the um, folks from the first two cohorts that uh, did not uh, get any scale-up funding, can go for some scale-up funding. Um, and then a new cohort of, of, of um, 10 finalists is going for um, uh, uh, some startup um, funding as well. And so, you know, these are kind of our, our closer to us at the moment innovators, and, and these are the ones where we want to make sure that their evidence is, is, um, is loaded up into the clearinghouse. 
Um, and we'll also have a booth at the clearinghouse and a little bit of airtime in the plenary and so forth, um, where we want to try to kind of grab people and get them filling out forms. And so if, if all goes well, we'll see a bump um, uh, after uh, 18 October, um, you know, 16 to 18 October and, and, and a bit beyond um, for, for getting more information and more interventions into this. Um, and it's also worth just underscoring that, um, you know, we will periodically have researchers um, here via a big data platform doing lit review running that very similar to what we did at USAID when some kind of buzzy thing comes out in the business press to kind of go and look into it a little bit and um, see if there's any evidence there, see if they'd be interested in getting their intervention um, uh, into the into the clearinghouse. Well, there you go. We have some, some extra resources to check out. Thank you, Brian. I don't see any new questions. I think we'll probably hang out here just just probably 20 more seconds in case anything else comes in. Um, but one question that did come up was just how people can reach out to you to talk about how they can use this with their teams. Mm -hmm. Do we have a, I think you're on the book, right? You're on the pages. Not yet. Oh, not yet? Yeah. Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan will take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, this no, man I'll, here. Really happy to. Yeah, again, it's the, um, you know, all engagement is good is good engagement at this stage. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, well, all of us are happy to be um, uh, reached out to and, and, and uh, looking for new ways to collaborate on this and digital ag generally. Great, so is that using the email address for, for Jonathan then? Is that the best way to do that? Um, how about uh, big data at cgiar.org? Okay. That's, that's our team email. Big data uh, at goes, that, that, that goes to all of us, yeah. Excellent. Well, it looks like you'll be hearing from somebody who wants to see how USAID slash BFS can feed into and learn from your work. So get excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the horizon for your team. <laughs> um, and do we have any final words before we close up our webinar today? No, thank you just so much. Thanks so much. Come to the party. Uh, the party will close after two years if no one comes, <laughs> um, probably. But um, we'll be doing our best to make it as uh, as interesting um, and valuable for everybody as possible between now and then. So, well, thank so you much. for being a lively webinar audience. Um, this will be re available recorded also and archived on the platform. So feel free to return to it at any point. All right. Signing off. Thanks thank all. You. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.